On my ride into the studio today, I got stuck in some traffic, and it made me think, wouldn't it be awesome if we could simulate traffic in Blender? Well, I thought about it, I thought about how it could be done, and I figured it out. So, let's learn how. Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of CGC Weekly here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This week we're going to be creating a traffic simulation. It's going to be pretty simple using only a particle system and some curves, but it'll deliver awesome results. So this will look awesome if you're like trying to get an aerial shot of like a, an interstate or of a, like a city street, or even if you're trying to do like a car chase scene and you want a bunch of cars driving along with yours. All you really need, as I stated earlier, is a particle system, a curve, and some car 3D models. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right now I just have the default Blender file opened up, and of course we won't really be needing too many of these things, so we'll just select them all and delete them. What we will be needing is a path, and we're going to be using this path to actually generate a road for our cars to drive on, and also for a um, for the cars to follow, right? Because we're gonna have the cars follow this curve. Not in the traditional, like, you know, follow path style, but in a particle system way that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, to start off, we're first going to eliminate the, a good part of this curve so we get it down to its like most basic form. And in order to do that, I'm just going to select, switch into edit mode and then select these two end vertices here. And we'll press X and select delete vertices and we'll delete this other end ver vertex down here. That way we only have two vertices, one at the origin and one one unit away. All right, so this is what we're going to be using to create our road. So I'm going to switch into top, or top orthographic view by pressing seven followed by five. And in edit mode, we're basically just going to drag this curve around and we're going to extrude from it and create new uh, little um, curves and make our road curve in whatever way we want. Uh, I always like to keep this first segment completely straight though. So I'm actually just going to drag this out a little bit more to right here maybe. Um, but from here, all we have to do is just create, you know, a general curve. And in this case, I might actually create like an overpass. That would be kind of cool. Do something like that. And then have it come around just like that. And I also like to end it on a straight line just like this. So we kind of have what's going to be an overpass. Right now it's flat, obviously. Um, but we have the beginning of our curve here. So I'm going to give this just a little bit of depth uh, by pressing O to turn on proportional editing. And we'll change this to connected. We'll press G and then Z to move our last vertex up and down. And then we'll use the scroll wheel to change how big our influence is. And I just kind of want to get this so it's a nice, smooth ride up. Actually, I might change this mode to linear, just like that. That way we kind of have a nice, smooth gradient up like that. So you can see that the path now kind of curves up and over slowly. Now, if we switch out of edit mode, you will notice that our path looks pretty jagged, right? And we're used to curves being very smooth. Uh, and this is because we don't currently have any sort of uh, bezier going on with this. So in order to enable that nice smooth curviness, we need to come over into the curve settings over here in our properties panel, scroll down to the bottom and under the active spline tab, we need to select or check the box that says bezier or bezier, bezier. I, I hate CG pronunciation. Per, per, pronunciations. Pronunciations are always so confusing. Um, but yeah, now you can see that our uh, curve is nice and smooth here. The next thing we need to do is give the road some sort of material or some sort of mesh. Uh, and in order to do this, we'll be utilizing the old, you know, um, plane array and curve modifier trick. And basically it allows us to create a path or a, um, a mesh that follows this curve. So I'll add a plane to our scene here and Right now, this is a little bit bigger than I imagined the street being, so we'll shrink it down a tad like so. Maybe to there, that looks good. We'll come into the modifiers tab, we'll select add modifier, and we'll select array. And we'll change the relative offset settings here so that, the, um, so that our plane and the array modifier is pointing in the general direction that we have this curve pointing in. So you can see that it kind of follows the curve right off the bat here. We wouldn't want it to be like, say, this where it's not following the curve at all. So we need to change these settings to match that. So we'll um, from here check the merge box that way our planes when they are uh, duplicated using the array modifier have some sort of connection to each other. Uh, and we'll also increase the count just a little bit to maybe 10 to start off with 
uh, and we'll finesse it later. Finesse, that's a fun word. Anyway, we'll come back into the modifiers tab here and add a curve modifier. We'll use the eyedropper tool to select our path. And just like that, you can see that our plane now begins to follow our curve here. Now, as you can see, it only goes so far though. So we'll have to open up the array modifier again here and increase the amount of replications there, not replication, the count, I guess. I will actually go all the way up to 30 here. And one thing you will also notice, and especially if you're using more complicated curves, is that our curve kind of banks. Um, in some cases, this can actually be really good, especially if you're creating like a banked raceway or a racetrack or something like that. But in our case, since this is gonna be like a freeway kind of thing, we don't want that. So we can select the curve. We can come to the curve settings over here. We can come up to the top where it says twisting and we can select Z up. And this will eliminate pretty much all twisting in our mesh and it'll make it so that our Z face or our, our what is it, our mesh here is always facing straight upwards. Perfect, so just like that we have our road created. Next, we need to create some cars to go on the road. In this case, in, in a real world application, you'd probably want to be using car 3D models or something that resembles a car because you know that'll get you more realistic results. But for the case of this tutorial, I'm actually just going to create a very, very basic car 3D model in another render layer here. And this model will be consisting of nothing more than a cube that I will cut up a little bit here. So I'm not gonna go into detail too much about this part because really it's not important what car model you use. All that matters is that you have something that resembles a car. Okay, and just like that, this is going to be the model I'm using for my cars. Now it does help sometimes if you have multiple cars and multiple different variations, um, but you know, ultimately, we just want some sort of 3D model of a car. Uh, if you do have multiple car models though, it is a good idea to put them in a group. So say I had two different car models here, I'd wanna select both of them, press G, or sorry, control G, not regular G. Um, and down here in our menu here, we can click create new group and we can name this cars, for example. Um, but I'm only using one model, so we'll just get rid of that. Anyway, we'll come back into our road layer here. I'm going to press Shift A and add another plane, and I'm going to rotate it across the Y axis 90 degrees by pressing R, Y, and then 90. We'll scale it across the Z axis so it gets nice and thin. We don't want a very thick plane at all. And we'll scale it across the Y axis so that it is roughly the same width as our road here. So you can see that maybe a little bit thinner was, was actually a better idea. Um, and we're gonna position it just kinda so it meets our road just like this. And we're going to add a particle system to this. And by default, you'll notice that the particles kind of emit and fall down. But we're going to do something a little bit special to this in order to make these particles actually follow this curve. So in order to do that, we're going to select the curve. We're going to come to the, uh, what is it, physics settings here. We're gonna click add force field. And then we're going to change the type to a curve guide. Now, as you can see, Anything that our particle emitter emits follows this curve, just like that. Now they are moving kind of ridiculously fast. So in order to change the speed of these particles, we need to change the lifetime of the particles because the lifetime is equal to the speed, right? So 50 frames of lifetime means it takes 50 frames to get from the bottom to the top. So in order to change this, we'll just change this lifetime up to something around you know, 1,000. You can see that the new particles being emitted are moving significantly slower and they look a lot more like cars. Here's the issue though, right now it looks like it's a stampede of cars. There are way too many, so we need to drop the number down to something maybe even around 100, just like that. That looks a little bit more realistic. I'm not sure it's really that perfect though. Maybe something like 50 is a little bit more accurate. I think 50 is a good number for me. Of course, you'll have to play around with this in your own road size because obviously if you're creating like a city street, for example, you don't want something this big. So now that we have our cars moving at a reasonable place, let's go ahead and give them an actual 3D model. That way we can, you know, work with them and make them look a little bit more normal. So in order to do that, I'll select our emitter plane down here, come into the particle settings up top here. We'll come into the render settings. Where are those? render settings right here and we'll select object from this menu now if you are using multiple car 3d models you're going to want to select group instead of object but since i'm just doing you know an object a single car object i'll select that 
And then we just need to select the uh, object from our you know, menu here. In this case, I know that it's called cube uh, because that's, it was just a cube when I added it. So as you can see, we now have a bunch of car 3D models being added. And there's a few things we notice. One, they are way too big. We don't want that. And they're also not facing in the direction that we want them to face. So for some reason, your cars aren't facing in the right direction. Usually they're facing like perpendicular to the road. All you need to do is go over to wherever your car models are located, select them, rotate them across the Z axis by 90 degrees, then press Control A and select rotation. Basically what we're doing here is rotating all of the geometry and then applying that rotation. So now if we come into the settings here, or not into the settings, but into our first render layer here where we had those cars originally, you can see that our cars are now being emitted more successfully. Of course, these cars are still way too big, so we can change their size by changing the size setting in the render properties, or render settings down here. Um, maybe a size of 0.02 would be okay for me. Um, and just like that, we're starting to get some pretty decent results of cars on the road. There are still too many, I think, and I think they're going a little bit too slow. So I'm gonna drop the emission number down to 50. That looks a little bit better. Um, and I'm also going to change the lifetime randomness up to somewhere around like 0.1. And basically, as you can see, this gives us a little bit of speed differentiation among our particles. Now, another thing you'll notice is as these particles, well, I guess kind of bad time to pick that up. As these particles approach the curve, they kind of just follow the curve and face in the same direction. And we don't want this to happen. So in order to counter this and make these cars rotation follow the curve, we need to come into the rotation tab in our particle settings here. So if I drop this down, I'll check the rotation box, and then I'll select dynamic. All of a sudden, our cars begin to follow and point in the same direction that the path is pointing. So as you can see here, as these cars are emitted, they're pointing in the same direction as the path as they drive along our curve here. So just like that, you can see that we have a pretty good basic car simulation for large scale like roads and stuff like that and we made it in just a few minutes. Of course, there's still a lot of work that would have to be done with this. For example, we'd have to you know, hide this emitter somewhere, maybe in a tunnel, and we also have to add materials to all the different things. But from a, like a basic standpoint, honestly, this is one of my favorite methods for simulating traffic in Blender. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little trick that I thought up on my ride into work today. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and I hope you don't mind, this video was completely and totally unscripted. Uh, as you can probably tell, I mean, I don't usually script my videos that much, but, you know. Yeah, stuff and things. Yeah. <laughs>